Inshallah and Ashe. Blessings to you, my energetic beings, and a welcome back to another Musing Moon Meditation. I am your host, a practicing holistic shamedium and subtle energetic surgeon. My intention is to truly utilize the power of these indigenous technologies, our original blueprint, to navigate your soul's harmonic through the realms of the elemental, the elemental highway into the imaginal realms, our subtle energetic fields, the elemental beings, and really so much more. With offerings, rituals, and prescriptions, the otherworldly medicine kind to add to your personal container, my goal is to truly merge the wisdom of these indigenous technologies with the subtle realms, the etheric highway, the cosmic soup, to assist you into navigating your prime directive, your inner genius, just really reintroducing you to and through the magical being that I believe resides within each and every one of us. And I call myself a holistic Shaw medium. My name is Tanya D and welcome to my audio medicine room. And if you haven't already, please be kind and do subscribe to my musing podcast, Musing with Tanya D on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or just subscribe to my musing newsletter just to be in the know. So you are notified when I share some light along with other social media platforms like TikTok, Instagram, YouTube, where you may possibly be watching this meditation and you too can subscribe there as well. However, if you wish to dive deeper, head on over to my Musing Corridor where I have offerings to guide you at club.tanyadi.tv. I am your holistic Shaw medium assistant. You truly are your own healer, but sometimes we do need a shamanic coach to see beyond the beyond and to share some insight to an otherworldly perspective. Wherever you are, I will for sure meet you there. So with the moon being in the season of Taurus and the fullness, the lunarities of Scorpio, just either arriving late evening on May 15th or early morning on May 16th, check your timeline uh, when the full moon is going to apex for you. In Utah, it appears to be apexing at about 10.13 p.m. Mountain Time, May 15th and 9.13 p.m. Pacific. Um, So the moon may bring the emotional material to the surface, the webbing, the fabric that's been buried so deep for so long. So we literally began May with the kind of sensual artistic frequencies of Taurus, the Earth Star. Taurus is this earthly grounding energy, manifesting, producing, bringing things to the Earth Star. And it has the ability to tune into the beauty of the natural, the material. So in the season of Taurus, we are drawing our focus towards things that we value, reflecting on our inner self-worth. And bringing that self-worth to our outer garden, embracing what makes us feel beautiful inside and out, just feeling valued. Despite the desire to kind of slow down or maybe take time and space on the couch, the cosmic highway is literally at a climax, a cosmic climax. One of this immense change, it's the season of eclipse, it's in full swing. So this full moon, this lunar eclipse in Scorpio, it's going to bring to the surface those buried emotional material. The moon is emotions, things that are material things that are physical. That's kind of the duality here. So these eclipses really have a tendency to eclipse people as well. So it's like circumstances or things literally are coming out of the closet, the cosmic closet, the cobwebs possibly. And Scorpio is all about intimacy, transformation, things we protect, trust, safety, boundaries. So all of this can highlight where we may have abandoned our own self-worth in order to experience closeness with the other, somebody else side of us. But being that this lunarity comes in at this magical degree of 25, it's our spiritual realm. It's opening us up, you know, it's like, are we ready to receive this spiritual memo? However, that's not all, folks. We also have what I would call an otherworldly or dimensional stellium. That's when many planets are at the same degree, not necessarily in the same sign. So on top of this solar eclipse, we have this magic flowing two days later. We've got Neptune, Mars, and Saturn adding to our cosmic juice to this container. So Scorpio, again, is already a deep transformative energy. The moon being our feelings, both water signs, right? Cancer is a water sign, the ruler of the moon. Um, So we may be diving deep into the threads of fate, spiritual fate, getting in alignment with spirit. So we desire these meaningful, emotional 
exchanges even more, more than ever, especially since um, we've been hibernating possibly during the 2020 experience. Sometimes it is not easy when we are feeling forced to change a plethora of things, right? So you may have had some shallow relationships that aren't satisfying you because they're not purifying enough. They're not clear enough. And the sun is literally shining upon us to love and trust what we feel and be mindful of those feelings. Being mindful of what our heart feels, the sun, we're going to elevate to a, a spiritual container, an acumen, where the voices of spirit are literally flowing through our own personal cosmic chalice. Where the moon, the moon is our emotional field, and I associate the moon to our sacral channel in our bodies, our sacral center, so our emotional field and our subtle bodies. And being in Scorpio, this is us being mindful of our energetic boundaries. Do we need to recalibrate our boundaries between our thoughts and our feelings? So is the outcome we have one that resonates with our field? I also associate Scorpio with what I call the shaman's portal, the library in the sky. So it's as if spirit is really showing us our records, the cosmic records, all of the records, the book of life, the book of shadows, our shadow records, the book of knowledge, all the juice, the Akashic. So just really asking us to validate our feelings, healing the past thread lines, our karmic story, the history of the karmic story, this timeline, or even other incarnations, even future ones kind of is kind of what I'm seeing but healing us begins this rippling effect out into the world in our day-to-day -day and in their and our outer and beyond it's uh, it's like when you skip a rock across a lake and it sends those ripples uh, those waves out that's kind of the frequency here but being that it's a lunar eclipse in the season of Scorpio we have more encouragement to let go of literally whatever is no longer serving us and eclipses in general, they bring the sudden and swift shift in changes, um, transformation. And full moons can also sometimes be the queen of drama as well. So as we start our journey to this lunarity, you may, like I did with the new moon in that eclipse, feel this a week before it literally lands, just experiencing unexpected changes, transformation around this time as well, because frequency, energy, and vibration, it's always fluttering and moving in that unseen realms. So it's bound to create some emotional intensity, even super intuitive people, people with placements and water signs and multiple channels or degrees. You're bound to feel like we're in this cosmic soup, this wishy-washy well of flowing emotions. So regulating our feelings with water activities or going hiking, nature, nature's going to serve us. She always does. She is the grand magic of it all. Allowing um, this well, this water to overflow and just wash. So remember, sometimes it's all about the breakdown to get to the other side, which is the breakthrough. So being that this eclipse is at the magical degree of 25, and we've got some other juice following it, our solar plexus is also online. So that's our thoughts and our feelings, like merging into the crown, adding to a seven. So our spiritual connection is absolutely 100% highlighted. Our spiritual connection is open in a few places. So we really have a theme here. We've got a theme of these 25s, and this is where I get the dimensional stellium from. So I would say it's creating what I believe it's called a trifecta when it comes to horse racing. It's so it's our spiritual acumen is online with this full moon juice, bringing in the ability to literally receive spirit in possibly an otherworldly, profound, prolific kinds of ways, a way that is dimensionally shifting and opening our eyes to these endless possibilities, these shifts, these twists. So this much magic is happening within this um, spiritual connection and this trifecta of these planets really creating what I would call that otherworldly stellium, a harmonic. So for each sign, I'm just going to insert a little snippet to muse about. So for Aries or Aries Risings, this eclipse for you is you choosing a new spiritual direction in your manifestation plane on the earth plane. So you're 
ending an old story, one that you may have held in the closet. So this eclipse may just trigger you to really have a life transformation. And you may also realize that everything in life has to change, like possibly getting a new job somewhere, realizing you need to move, possibly new friends, or just finding a new space and direction around town. So there could end up being seriously a complete life transformation with this full moon lunar eclipse that you no longer recognize the shape of your life or where your life is going. You probably agree that this is, um, it's been a long term in the making. And also because uh, the moons are, or the moon's nodes are also involved. This may mean it's a new belonging as far as where you see yourself with your manifestations, a new belonging as far as where you see yourself when it comes to trusting yourself. But another part in this spiritual frequency, this energy, this dimensional otherworldly stellium brings Mars and Neptune, which are in Pisces. So this is pulling your threads, your thread lines into a higher spiritual realm because you're literally pursuing Mars. It's in your 12th house. So it's like you're cutting these karmic cords with other people and you're ending old spiritual cycles and moving forward with a new spiritual legacy a new spiritual direction. So your ego, Mars, is forging ahead um, when it comes to your spiritual future and unfolding a spiritual acumen, a new spiritual path. And even Neptune is in the sauce. And Neptune being here, it's a message of coming into your fine tunement, like tuning in with your spiritual legacy. So just a couple days after this full moon eclipse, this is when the sauce gets really saucy. This is going to be the moment where your spiritual legacy literally unfolds, making um, itself clear. So be on the lookout for something uh, fascinating, otherworldly may happen. It may be past life relationships, somebody who comes back into your life. It may just be a miracle that literally unfolds. And it may be very interesting, like a twist of turn of events. Um, that you really never <laughs> anticipated or saw coming. And also, to add to the sauce, we've got Saturn, again, at that dimensional frequency of 25. So this may be the uh, coordination of your spiritual faith changing with some sort of responsibility out in society, out into the world. So you will be, from this lunar eclipse forward, really taking responsibility for a spiritual role or a spiritual destiny, a path of where your world is going, uh, possibly among friends, your social reputation, because this is your 11th house, and also your second house, which is what you value, it's Taurus, what you put out as a product, what you create, is just combining with these energies. Taurus, this full moon lunar eclipse is changing and shifting the ways you see your relationship chapter, changing your behavior, what it's manifesting in the background. So with Scorpio, this is relationship changes, change to how you were able to possibly relate to yourself, how you relate to other people, drawing boundaries around those relationships, possibly a change in the long term relationships, a perspective, that mountain top point of view. How do you see yourself in commitments, long-term relationships, partnerships all together? So this is actually going to be the epicenter, if you will, of this full moon lunar eclipse for you. So all this change for Taurus really apexes with this full moon. Um, that's going to be the day where your heart kind of surrenders. It's surrendering and in the surrendering, it's like the offering to a new spiritual vision of yourself or a spiritual calling of yourself. Like, how do you see yourself behaving in the future? How do you see your character behaving in the future? How do you see yourself acting or performing? It's all futuristic. So this new future, this spiritual perspective with the full moon, lunar eclipse, and Scorpio is you actually changing and transforming these long-term relationships, your approach with them. So maybe an old story when it came to relationships, it's maybe you letting go an old vision and embracing a new vision that really is based on a spiritual acumen, a promise or a spiritual intention that you possibly made in the other world before coming down into the earth plane. So ultimately, this is where uh, we're going to change our character, change long-term relationship perspective, 
and also change your approach. So this kind of creates this domino vehicle effect with these planets all in alignment. Um, so Mars is actually pushing for you to put yourself out into the world, put yourself on the stage, promote yourself. Um, this is where you belong in the social realm. So this is like the social, the societies. It's going to be growing. So you are now moving forward with your so social calling, whatever that may be. It could be an upgrade for your persona. And Neptune, Neptune is tugging you along into your proper place, like where you belong in the world as far as what your spiritual alignment, your attunement with the world is, an agreement you made maybe with God universe, spiritual alignment. So with this coagulation, this dimensional stellium, it's like moving forward with whatever that spiritual calling is for you. So the spiritual calling in the world, it's tied to um, your character. It's a new calling, a new action. It's a transformation. So the spiritual calling of you in the world is kind of announcing that things are going to happen um, in this season along with Saturn. Saturn is you committing to this spiritual calling within your career and legacy. So you have the spiritual calling out into the social world. It's a spiritual calling within your essence, within your beingness. Um, and it's merging with your career and your legacy. Um, so yeah, that's some super sauce there, right? So Gemini, there's a lot of expansion of faith for you uh, with this happening for you. A lot of evolution on how you think of faith, spirituality, karma, positive or negative. So during this time, you are also manifesting changes to your daily earth life, manifesting changes to your lifestyle, your health, your daily routines. You're going to see these changes in um, the day to day, possibly closing out certain habits in business and opening up new habits in business as your heart's really investing in new faith, investing in a new spectrum, a new rainbow, a new approach to faith. So possibly this faith issue, this faith transformation, the full moon is going to be you, your heart, your chalice, the queen surrendering to a new spiritual mission, something that you feel that your heart literally spiritually feels called to do so this could be a new faith in life altogether like that new treasure a big picture of faith um, and life so this is the sun opening us up to a new faith and the moon scorpio is going to be closing down to a different spiritual timeline in day-to-day -day life or a lifestyle possibly that you've been living on the day to day. So something is going to shift. Something's going to change in your daily life, lifestyle, how you work, how you perform. Uh, maybe you're shutting down an old way of performing, an old way of living. And maybe you've been living with so many years, possibly somebody, a boyfriend, I'm saying, I'm thinking of relationships. Um, that's even cascading. You know, it's the seven year spiritual cycle that may be coming to a close. So a new seven year chapter of your daily world with health performance and lifestyle possibly may be opening up. So the full moon lunar eclipse for you is really a spiritual acumen, a turning point for Gemini's when it comes to the daily life and having galactic super juice faith in life changing. And with the trifecta for you <laughs> with Mars and Neptune, this is your career and your legacy. So Mars is the action. It's pushing you forward. And those areas, career, legacy, decision, uh, personal leadership, where you see yourself going in the future, maybe parenting, long-term futuristic plans, what you want to do when you settle down. So Mars in this space is pushing for those changes in daily life pushing to make the changes in the career and the legacy where Neptune is opening you up to a true spiritual purpose, a spiritual calling um, that you agreed to when you journey down into this time and space. And then your heart's going to surrender to the spiritual mission and surrender to a spiritual direction. Spirit meaning something that your spirit was literally called to do something you agreed to. It's like God universe opened the galactic door in heaven before you were born. And you um, said, this is your secret sauce and you're going to bring it down on the platter at the plate. So I believe you're going to send surrender to a spiritual calling for your future uh, legacy, how you're seen in the world. 
and Saturn for you, which is energetically now aiming for a life purpose or a belief about life. So this is adding to the cosmic soup that it's time for you to take responsibility for your life purpose or an understanding about life and just going forward uh, with this new life purpose, this new definition of what the meaning of life is or what the meaning of life, uh, what you want your meaning of life to become. So this kind of serves on the platter a focal point. So it's these, uh, this galactic stellium, this dimensional stellium is kind of those three phases for you. So you're going to have this full moon lunar eclipse, which says that you literally have a new faith, a spiritual direction, and it's tied to some kind of career and legacy and leadership abilities, which also ties to a new life purpose, a new direction in your life. Um, could be travel, could be education, but there's a lot of energy going on just after this as well. Uh, cancer, what you're manifesting in the background is you're manifesting a new love story, a love story to yourself, a new story of your heart, probably changing boundaries, creative projects, uh, relationships to children, romance, all things related to the fifth house, something that you're trying to develop uh, in the galactic future of things. So there's a transformation of where to draw the boundary in matters of your heart, letting go of old matters of your heart, embracing new matters of the heart. It's like once we allow one thing to leave, we can open the door so another to come in. It's the infinity symbol for each and every one of us, actually. I should have said that all along. But this would include any sort of pain you may have had in your heart, Cancer. So if you've had a heartbreak in the past, um, this is going to be really the letting go of the heartbreak. So this whole transit of where you move in the world with this eclipse means you're going to be surrendering to a new place that you can see yourself in the world, a new spiritual calling, a new spiritual mission. And with the full moon in Scorpio, you're going to have at the same time releasing your attachment to some heartfelt connection that you possibly once had, uh, releasing a heartache of the past, releasing maybe a creative project. This could be letting go of some romance that's no longer serving you. Something that your heart, um, it's no longer serving the heart's mission. So you may surrender to a spiritual calling, your spiritual destiny out in society, out in the world, 11th house. So this event um, and your trifecta, I might add, um, this is Mars and Neptune, and this is the section of spiritual life purpose for you. So you may find that you are now ready to move forward to a new purpose of life. Uh, Mars is pushing you to move forward, maybe having a spiritual advancement, opening to the door, your eyes to a spiritual acumen in your beliefs, education, maybe travel. Maybe you're going to travel a lot. Um, it's kind of playing out there. And Neptune is you surrendering to a spiritual calling, a purpose that you feel in life. So... Your purpose is energetically tied to this spiritual process, if you will, a purpose in society. So this new spiritual calling out into the world. So there's this connection for you with this trifecta. Uh, it's continuing to drive your life purpose. And Saturn for you is taking the responsibility, the initiation for a life transformation. So it would be a transformation of your boundaries, what you open up to, what you close down to, what you embrace, what you hold in your chalice of life. So a complete life transformation. So it looks like cancers are really going to go through some major changes instigated by the fact that you feel this new spiritual calling out in society, letting go of certain heart attachments. Um, this is where you're going to be able to really call in uh, a spiritual life purpose, a meaning of life, a certain destiny. So this is also tied to those boundaries and making changes in your life, reshaping your life, letting things in, closing things out, removing the cosmic closet, the cobwebs, I guess, in a way. So this is really the highest aspect that Saturn's actually going to go when it comes to life transformation. So you're going to realize that your life is going to have to transform boundaries need to change according to spiritual calling or spiritual destiny. So you have a lot of um, stuff happening with um, working to make some changes through all these spaces in time and space. Leo, so for you, the moon in Scorpio, which means you're going to be manifesting different feelings about yourself, different emotional security. Uh, it's home, it's family. So you're going to be manifesting changes within your home, changes in your family, changes in 
feeling emotionally secure, getting comfortable with yourself, climbing into your own skin and feeling just super juicy in your skin. So these changes in your career and home and family with this full moon lunar eclipse for you, it's as if you're being destined, you're being called to go on a path, a new path for career and less legacy. Something's going to open up. Something's going to reveal itself, possibly a spiritual path as well. Honestly, all of these are spiritual paths. I should have said that in the beginning, but possibly a karmic situation around your home, family, and security. So you're going to be transforming your old definition of what security is and feeling comfortable in your own skin. And for you, the future direction that's shifting. So there's something, something that's actually been destined before you landed on planet Earth, came into the Earth plane. It was an agreement that you made with the heavenly universe, the realms, that's really going to open you up to a certain path and take you on some spiritual journey, a spiritual path, which involves the transformation of your emotional security, your foundation, your family, your fourth house. So this transformation actually began, or it started a chain reaction, a spiritual calling with Mars and Neptune. Um, this is going to be making changes and shifts within your personal boundaries, comfort zones, uh, boundaries with yourself, boundaries with others, just transforming where you trust and where you're not trusting, where you're intimate, maybe not intimate. So Mars, Mars is the cutter. It's going to cut away from things in your life that really no longer serve you. Mars is also our ego. So it's kind of this consciousness there. And Neptune is going to be um, moving you forward in this life transformation. Um, so this is spiritually, um, it's a spiritual memo. We're all getting them. So it's a lifetime transformation. It's tied to your career, emotional security, a shift in those areas. But this again is something that you too agreed to do in the other world the transformation that you knew you would transform in life and shift and change at some point um, it's going to be in alignment with the spiritual calling having spiritual boundaries and also the energetic an energetic change bringing in a spiritual vision for this transformation for your life and this could be a complete transformation also actually so you may transform how you live where you live who lives with you it could be relationships it could actually be a complete makeover for yourself, a complete transformation, possibly one that you are actually looking for at some point in your life. And you are just ready to see life change. Like you're bringing it in the secret sauce. And Saturn, Saturn is you committing to a spiritual change, uh, long-term relationships, possibly both. So you may have an aspect of yourself in order to pull off this career home foundation change that you have to kind of um, recreate a lifestyle change, but also involve a relationship, one that you want to be involved in or uh, that you're presently involved in. So Saturn, there's this spiritual change, a spiritual calling, something that your soul wanted, possibly your soul literally cried out for at some point in your life. And it's coming to the point where it's time to really happen. So your trifecta of these 25s is like you deciding that you're going to let go of an old de definition of what emotional security looks like and move into a new direction, a new candy jar, I guess, a spiritual legacy and career and direction. So this is a complete transformation of life and some sort of taking of responsibility for a spiritual direction, a long term relationship. Um, so there are other aspects that are changing as well, but um, I think that's enough for your sauce for today. Virgo, this transformation is actually going to happen with your belief structure, which is a magnetic force for you. It's really important for Virgos because whatever a Virgo believes, that's what a Virgo can manifest. So you have Taurus in the house of your belief structure. So everything that you manifest is truly heartfelt belief based on what your heart surrenders to, uh, the philosophy you believe in. Whatever your heart feels is true, actually, that manifests for you. You were actually focusing on building new values around your belief structure um, from that first new moon solar eclipse, which kind of sealed the deal for you on believing in yourself in a whole new otherworldly way. Just having belief in yourself, this actually brought you to a new value system of yourself. 
Um, and from this place of value and of believing, now you're expanding. This is the sauce. This is the juice about all of life. So you're having a lot of transformation and manifesting a new belief that really leads to manifesting and bringing that into reality. So this is physical changing, the physical changes of what you believe, which leads to physical changes in your day to day life. So you're going to be changing what you manifest as far as your thinking is concerned, closing out old thinking, opening up to new thinking. These are items in the third house, creating boundaries around different sets and patterns and thoughts and just all this transformation between belief and thinking. So your heart, the sun, is ready to move forward with a new life purpose. This purpose is spiritually destined. Um, you were destined to have this life purpose. You're destined to follow this path, this purpose. Um, so the eclipse is going to be you letting go of an old attitude, an old mindset, possibly an old intellectual idea. So just letting go of some sort of plan of how you thought about life, a plan as far as possibly what you thought the long-term world was going to be. So this transformation is going to be of your attitude as well. It's spiritually, um, it's a spiritual destiny. So this eclipse for you is a total transformation of your life purpose, a uh, plan for your life an intellectual attitude. So it's the old attitude that's going to definitely die and a new birthing of a new attitude is going to be born. So the old is going to be literally out of the cosmic closet. Um, and your trifecta of these triple events, uh, which for Virgos, this is relationships um, and Virgo risings. So your relationships are changing. You're closing the doors and opening the doors. You're instigating a healing um, in all your relationships. And Pisces is like cutting the cords and making things work in those relationships. So it's um, drawing us into our destined relationships, relationships that we were meant to have, embracing um, commitments that you had in the heavenly realm, the ancestor realm. So Neptune for you, which means some sort of um, relationship is moving forward. There's kind of a strategic moment here. So this might be an approach to a partnership in general. Maybe you're planning on having one, but whatever is happening for you in your seventh house, this is where life was spiritually destined for you. Um, it was something that you were going to come into and do in this life one way or another. And it's going to be tied to that life purpose, the change. Um, so this is just you moving forward with the spiritual destiny um, and taking responsibility for some sort of lifestyle shift or change could be work, lifestyle, your own personal performance, the way you perform at work, where, where you do work. Maybe you're just moving up your total workplace. So you're going to move forward with some sort of lifestyle change, a mastery with your life. Um, it's going to change, have a change in purpose, change in relationship, change in lifestyle, whatever that is for you. Libras. Libras are transforming their entire life, or at least the plan of their life, because they are transforming where they draw the boundaries in life. And this actually began uh, with that new moon for you, just being focused on a new foundation, a new building, a new self-trust, boundaries within yourself, reasons to actually authentically trust the being that resides within you, the magical being that resides within you. So this was a, an investment of you Investing in yourself and trusting yourself and talking to yourself through creating personal boundaries, the foundation of self-trust. So personal boundaries really set the frequency for what is going to happen. Just innovating your boundary structures on every aspect of your life. And this is going to set the stage of, for how your life can transform. So you're like raising the bar of what can be changed. So there could be a variety of aspects in your life that you thought would never be able to be changed or <laughs> maybe you thought you could never get out of certain situations. But this is um, you raising the bar, the unlimited potential of a transformation as you're changing your boundaries, manifesting new values, new material things, uh, new potential. So you're manifesting material, literal aspects in your life, changes in the material and changing your ability to manifest money, abundance, products, business, jobs, all those kinds of things. This is like material gain. And that ends up happening because you are, you are the architect by design where you create and draw those boundaries. 
um, in line with your world around you. So with the full moon, the lunar eclipse, this is where you're going to be surrendering to your spiritual mission, where you're going to have some transformation in your life, a spiritual mission. It's not going to be li literally like a religious thing. It's a soul calling. It's something your soul was called to. Something, an aspect of your soul, your shaman's portal <laughs> that you always knew was going to be part of those Akashic records, your plan, part of the process. So you're going to surrender to some sort of boundary transformation. And so other things are going to open up or some things are going to be closing, reorganizing your life, uh, perhaps just shifting and changing the shape of your life, the form of your life. So it's going to be the death of an old plan for abundance and a birth of a new plan for abundance. So you're going to have like this spiritual transition. It's basically changing your life and rebirthing some sort of grand plan for manifestation, abundance. Um, and Mars and Neptune, they are calling for your daily transformation in your daily life, cutting those old ties, the changing of how you look at life, work at life, uh, change in health just moving you forward, stepping into your skin, a new lifestyle, a new way of working. Um, so it's just helping you find your own spiritual calling and it's going to kickstart some sort of destiny, a spiritual calling when it comes to lifestyle or performance. So you're going to be ready to really move forward with a lifestyle or that performance. And again, this could be something that you also agreed to in heaven as we all do, right? Before we land on the earth plane, something that's faded, um, mostly a part of our life transformation tied to a life transformation. So they're sinking these knots um, and it's initiated with the full moon and Aquarius for you, Saturn, actually, um, that's taking responsibility for this spiritual acumen when it comes to your personal dreams, the change in your living style and just moving forward with personal dreams, creativity, romance. So it's, that's when you're, uh, it becomes initiated this life transformation. So feels super juicy, doesn't it? So for you, it's almost like you're putting these finishing touches for a new marriage vows, possibly a new value for yourself, new ways to take time to love and protect yourself, time to um, actually marry yourself, have a relationship with yourselves. And this really is the foundation of all of your relationships moving forward, how they're going to expand, how they're going to grow. And they are going to be like the magic sauce of growth. So this is you transforming your vision of what long-term relationships can be, how they unfold, why you are doing um, this relationship development. The moon, Scorpio, is going to be manifesting that new behavior, your response patterns to others, new interactions, a ways of working, just moving you into a new character. So this is you really releasing an old image of yourself, an old relationship that you may have had with yourself, a character that you no longer reside. It doesn't work for you anymore. So you're going to be releasing an old way of behaving, uh, an old position, maybe things that you were known for and just letting go of something that you once did because you're now embracing something that you intend to do now. So your heart's going to be surrendering to a long-term relationship, maybe a new relationship. It could be a relationship with somebody specific a whole new team. They're all karmic. They're called in by the divine, the universe, God universe, um, called in by your higher self. So your heart really is ready to manifest this new strategy when it comes to relating. Um, so it's going to be the death of a character, a birth of a new character within yourself. And this rebirth, it's spiritually destined. This is where your magic sauce is, which means for you, it's something that you also agree to in the galactic core the universe um, it was a signed agreement a contract that you had to be this new character but it also needs to be in alignment with certain relationships or certain characters so for you mars is uh putting in the action uh, matters of the heart creativity romance children arts expression of your heart um, things your heart loves and Neptune is kickstarting the destiny of your heart, the destiny of the heart to create, to project maybe a romantic situation, a personal dream, spiritually induce something your heart's always dreamed of. Um, but whatever it is, God, universe, that put that on your destiny path. You're destined to have this moment, uh, to be in this place in your life. 
So it's about launching a relationship, rebirthing of your character, finding yourself on a new path, a personal heartfelt dream. And Saturn, Saturn's going to actually assist you in focusing on your emotional foundation. This is your home, this is your family, emotional security, something that's gonna serve that foundation, serve as feeling good in your own skin, being comfortable in your skin. Um, so yeah, this is all, that's your trifecta, your 25s. So you're gonna be taking responsibility for a new foundation of, of emotional security, something that literally gives you emotional security. It could be a home, a new job, um, it could be an alliance, anything that actually gives you security. So it's a birth of a spiritual security that was destined because if something that was destined, it was uh, something we agreed to. So for Scorpios, you are having a new relationship, a rebirth of a character, moving forward with some sort of personal dream, a creative endeavor, and becoming responsible now, becoming grounded, becoming secure in a way that you possibly have never imagined before, um, because it's going to fit like a glove in a way, because you've made the deal, you had a conversation with God, if you will, um, before incarnating on planet Earth. Sagittarius, this is a transformation of your values and things. Um, it's going to transform your working style. So where, where you were investing in a new relationship and bringing this investment to your body, a new relation to the present and the new moon solar eclipse, that's the investment into manifesting. It's a new connection, a new foundation kind of connection um, how you connect in the moment to moment um, are you connected in the moment so you're kind of laying the foundation a new pathway and also you are changing your faith um, changing your spiritual fat path soulmate situations stuff like that you know um, where you may have some past life friends that uh, some friends are going and some are coming in, but you're going to find you're going to open up to a new spiritual journey that's been hidden away in your subconscious reality. So you may be closing down an old plan, coming full circle, cycling through a spiritual cycle, manifesting a new spiritual path, manifesting a new spiritual legacy, a direction, and your heart's really going to lay down that pathway for what you wish to manifest in your life on the day to day. It's a turning point really of your lifestyle performance transformation. So you're going to be surrendering to this path, this spiritual path and surrendering to a new path all simultaneously. So it's something that your soul probably also signed up for in the past in another incarnation, another timeline, um, past life that now you're eager to get started on heal those wounds because this is all playing out in your 12th house which means that you're going to be surrendering to an old spiritual timeline, a narrative and embracing a new spiritual timeline. So for you, the suns and the risings on all of them, actually, you're truly are the signs that are really going to take a pathway into a new spiritual mission. So for you with Mars and Neptune, your trifecta, Mars is our ego. It's moving through the home and family, emotional security, a new response to your family, uh, how you deal with your feelings in public, maybe how you deal with feelings with people. And it's going to mesh up your trifecta, um, is surrendering to the spiritual mission within your lifestyle, but also it's tied to some sort of new spiritual container, I would say, within home, family, emotional foundation. So the emotional foundation, that could possibly be what grounds and secures you. So this could be literally a home, purchasing a home, a business, a foundation, um, a foundation of your life, a new story, or even a whole new faith, a beacon of faith. It could be very well, literally just a new spiritual practice, let you practice bringing in different faith. But that's going to be the foundation of your life, this faded foundation is kind of the promise you make to yourself for the rest of your life or at least for a very 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 long time it's going to be difficult to figure out for how long uh, mostly because pisces does not happen in everybody's lifetime right um, it's like a multi-dimensional lifetime opportunity so for you saturn saturn is you committing to the spiritual vision which happens in your mind so this could be intellectual stuff communication 
a messenger, maybe an influencer, maybe you collect or create something that's intellectual. These are all third house ideas, um, committing to them. It could be a book, a song, uh, computer stuff. It's a spiritual destiny. So you're going to launch a new lifestyle, a new work direction, performance, all tied to spirituality and faded, faded emotional security, uh, uh, an emotional security system, if you will, a foundation that's also tied to this intellectual mindset. Capricorns, you have been hitting the sweet spot in your chart. Um, this physical area of love, creativity, and romance. So it's going to like take that new moon eclipse, which was the foundation of your self-love within yourself, a new relationship to your inner child, hugging that inner baby, evaluating your emotions, expressions of holding your heart, being there for yourself in your container in a way that you possibly have never been for yourself ever in the past. So this is just a new way of being there for your own heart, in your own chalice, in your own container. It's the foundation, your heart expressing everything that your heart truly wants. Like the child, right? Romance, creativity, watching little kids, creative stuff you're creating, arts, music. It's a dream of a lifetime. So this is where you're going to be elevating your manifestation at the same time. You're manifesting a new relationship to society, 11th house, investing in your heart, expanding your innovations, your change on how you interact with society. You're going to manifest closing doors and opening doors uh, that were once opening and moving through society. It's like you're flowing. So just shifting boundaries with the public, your reputation, um, how you are seen in the world. So this is really big shifts for you. And your heart's going to be surrendering to your spiritual calling of your heart. It's within you. So it's a spiritual mission, surrendering to a manifestation of the physical, which is Taurus, to the spiritual in a vibrational direction where you're going to be transforming your public reputation what you were known for out into the world or what you do in the world. Maybe you get a new career, a new job, how people see you. So it's going to be the end of an old spiritual mission in the world and a birth of a new spiritual mission out into the world. Because it's going to be the birth of a new spiritual mission, a birth of your heart. This is the beginning stages. It's setting the foundation. So for you, your trifecta is pushing the ideas. Um, you're going to be really busy with contracts, um, maybe creative ideas, coming up with new innovative plans, creative writing, things that uh, are with the intellect, and just surrendering to a spiritual calling from your heart to really transform the reputation that you have into the world at some point and have a, a spiritual calling within the mind, a plan within your mind, an attitude within your mind, a project that's been in your mind. And Saturn, this is your attitude in the mind, a new spiritual direction. It's a mission of the mind, and it's tied to some physical, earthly manifestation with money, business, and finance. So it's like putting it all together in your cosmic soup. You're surrendering to something, a spiritual destiny within your heart, which then transforms to a spiritual destiny of your mind, your attitude, uh, all things mind related, actually, intellectual property. Um, spiritual stuff, the sense of your soul. Um, you just signed up for this. And Saturn, that's financial manifestation. This is abundance manifestation. So this is a huge step moving forward with some kind of manifestation, abundance, materialism, finances, all things related to the second house. So it's just like flowing right through, uniting your heart, um, being a force filled. Aquarius. This spiritual and physical manifestation is focused on your emotional foundation. It's a new, innovative approach to life. An emotional foundation, how you feel about yourself, how you ground yourself. Are you comfortable in your own skin? So this is the part of you where you're going to take it to an elevated otherworldly height, where you're reaching differently within your own feelings, your own emotions, taking yourself to a higher value station, if you will, how you value your emotions within yourself, how you treat yourself emotionally. So this is like a new investment within your foundation, your structure, a new way of basically treating your feelings and being there for yourself, grounding your feelings elementally. Join me for rising of the origins. Uh, so you're manifesting your potential and investing in this foundation, your fourth house. So it all comes down to an emotional foundation. 
in Scorpio. Scorpio is in your 10th house, manifesting boundary changes with your future, career, um, your leadership, your legacy, retirement, all things related to the 10th house. So you're building a new emotional foundation, but at the same time, you're transforming the direction of your career, legacy, retirement. Um, and it's like where you draw the line with those things, putting love and trust in those things. Basically, as you feel better in one aspect, you make different decisions, different commitments. So this is going to be your heart. You're going to subscribe to a new channel spiritually, a new spiritual de definition, a timeline, emotional security. So this also is probably something faded, something your soul um, had always intended on doing. It's destined to do it. Um, you know, it's like sometimes we're destined to do things that get landed in our place. It opens the door to a new spiritual perspective, a new destiny. You know, it could be a destiny of even own, owning a home where the universe puts a home in front of you. That actually happened for me with the house I'm in. I wasn't even looking for a house. It was like God, the universe opened the door and here I am. Um, so you're going to be moving forward with a spiritual destiny tied to an emotional security. Um, it's going to be the end of an old career legacy, something that you may be held over your head and moving room for a new one. So it's the physical and the spiritual of Pisces energy, Mars and Neptune. When it comes to manifestation, like pulling you forward for manifestations, productivity, income, revenue streams. So this is all moving you into a new financial source, abundance together. So I would say that this is like the destiny possibly could be, again, purchasing a new home, a major investment, something that's creating that solid foundation of security, emotional security. So it's like this spiritual timeline around money manifestation is opening you up. And then Saturn is you committing to a spiritual timeline for you. This is your character. It's what you're going to be known for. And so it's putting it all together in the cosmic soup, a new investment, emotional foundation, a uh, shift in your career legacy, that pathway, that direction and spiritual. It's going to be a spiritual calling with that manifestation in your cosmic soup along with your character, a change of character, ego. So it's all tied to this as well. So it's a big change around emotional foundation, finances, abundance, and your own personal character, your super sauce. And Pisces, being that this full moon is both on the spiritual side and the physical side of life, it really is going to be a transformative month for you, to say the least. So this transformation for you is all about manifesting a new way of thoughts. So you're going to be manifesting a new intellectual foundation in life. And it's going to be end up changing your values, the entire rainbow spectrum, the universe. So Scorpio is going to be taking a new perspective, a mountaintop perspective on how you value life as a whole. So this has been building up where you were reacting differently to the way you think about yourself, your mental attitude about yourself. So you feeling empowered with a new attitude and valuing yourself and how you serve yourself and carrying these new values to elevate your thoughts, your processor. So when we invest in our intellect, this is like the part of our frequency, the waves of our brains, our attitudes, um, the physical part, the logical versus the uh, spiritual, our acumen. I'm thinking of my intuition just flowing through those channels. And what that turns into is like manifesting a new belief within yourself. And Scorpio is going to be the new life purpose, a new calling. It's a shift in your paradigm, I should say. So this is a new plan for your spiritual future, spiritual destiny, where your mind is coming up with all these ideas. And it literally may be like having like God, the angels, the conversation, sitting at your spiritual altar. That's kind of what I do. A spiritual sense, things that your soul feels called to. And just knowing that it's a spiritual calling, it might be this intellectual property where you're planning to also create a story that um, involves something spiritual in aspect, whether it's a story, uh, writing a book, something intellectual, um, sitting, praying with spirit, meditating, if that's new for you. So it's kind of this official end to one life purpose. 
so the door can open to a new life purpose. So it's the old spiritual life is going to be gone, done, kazami, see you later. And something you thought your life purpose was or your meaning of life was, it's getting energetically into the void, pulled out, leaving room for a new purpose where you're going to be moving forward on this new plan that you're creating. So there's going to be like this prolific kind of profound energy working on your ego, kind of kneading the sauce with Mars empowering you to move and having all this extra juice, this extra energy to get things done and move forward. And Neptune, this is like spiritual identity. It's in Pisces. So you've got a lot of juice happening for you. So you may be in, into a new plan, a new company, a new image, a character, a behavior, all first house kind of stuff, um, a new action plan. People may see a new character come out of you. It's all tied to a soul's calling. And Aquarius, or Saturn, I should say, this is you taking responsibility for that spiritual calling. So you may have a vision, a dream, and you just feel like it's time for this spiritual acumen, taking responsibility for your faith to move forward and just following um, this frequency, this spiritual path, this faith, this calling possibly even a soulmate situation so it's all tied to you personally in your cosmic soup your ego your how you're seen in the world so this action plan just moving forward so that's your triple triple trifecta for you was um ego personality spiritual faith and that calling for you now with all of that let's create our um Musing moon meditation. I know that was long. I should put all these in the show notes so you can kind of get to your area and zip to the end if you so feel chosen to. But this is going to be more of a spiritual kind of a protection meditation, just opening up our intuition, our spiritual energies. Um, sometimes they get in between the morphogenic fields, just clearing the waves. But first, we're going to do kind of uh, formal protection so we can get a clear answer from our guides from the other side. So as a person that is intuitive, psychic, empathic, shamanic, um, it's really important to clear out the clutter, the cosmic clutter, the other energies that don't belong in our um, frequency because the clutter of those energies really gets in the way of us seeing things clearly. So whenever I meditate or even pray, um, I usually go through this ritual every morning just to make sure my frequencies are online. So just make sure that you're sitting in the center of something where you feel safe. You're in your container in front of your altar and just, you know, you can even just imagine that you're sitting Indian style and um, the circle goes all the way around you. So as the circle, the sphere, it goes all the way around you. See yourself sitting in the center of this magical sphere, the essence that you are, your personal container. And when we're in the circle, the sphere the first thing I would say out loud or either to myself is that I am within my sacred circle and within the sacred circle, I am protected. I command all energies to exit my sacred sphere and that only the energies allowed in my sacred circle are my higher self, my angels, my ancestors, the guardians, my gatekeepers, my personal guide, the divine, the universe, God. So you can say whatever resonates with you and through you, spirit. And all other energies must exit my cosmic sphere, including any misaligned energies, any misguided energies, anything that do not belong to my higher self. So you are in the circle with just you yourself, your higher self, your angels, your guardian, your guides. And then I'm going to call in all the energies into this sacred space, into this sacred sphere. And we are going to connect to all of our boundary consciousness within this circle. We're going to connect with all of our love chalice within this circle. We are protecting and connecting with all of our emotional frequencies and energies. We are going to connect and protect to all of our beliefs in our circle, within our chalice. Protecting and connecting with where we belong and do not belong within our sacred chalice. 
We are going to connect and protect with our thoughts and our attitudes within this chalice. We're going to connect and protect all of our ability to open and receive from the universe inside this chalice. We are protecting, we are trusting, and we are loving our connection to spirit and the higher beings, the seen and the unseen within our sacred chalice. We are going to connect and protect with our commitment, our responsibility to spirit within our acumen, within the sacred sphere, within our chalice. We are protecting and connecting with our actions, our character, our behavior within our sacred sphere. take a breath and take a pause and we're going to trust and love the connection that we have to our values our manifestations within our own sacred chalice and as we continue we are going to connect within our chalice know that we are trusting knowing that we are safe knowing we are becoming the being that resides within us. Take another inhale. And one more time, we're going to connect on a conscious spiritual level inside of our sacred sphere. We're connecting to the magical being that resides within us, spiritually connected, aligned with all the things that are going inside of our circle we're going to keep the angelic beings our higher selves our wedemes our ancestors and all of the essence that no longer serves leaves the cosmic closets and we're going to just keep within our sphere our chalice the things that are in alignment with our highest good and with that, I say, inshallah and ashe, blessings to you.